Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the other side of the fence, into Apple's premier media streaming device, the third generation Apple TV 4K. We and other viewers can't seem to avoid mentioning this device, as this is definitely one of the most capable streaming devices available right now. There were even arguments being thrown in our previous Android TV comparison videos, saying that this is the best device out there, regardless of its price point or operating system. In this video, we'll try to see what the fuzz is all about, and have a look at the functionalities it offers, all from the eyes of an Android TV user. So let's dive in. At the time of making this video, the latest Apple TV 4K is the one released in 2022. It comes in two variations. The base model which comes with 64GB of internal storage. And the top tier model which doubles that storage to 128GB, with the addition of thread networking support, and a gigabit ethernet port. The top tier variant is our review unit here. Both come with the third generation Siri remote with USB-C. Support for Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 for connectivity. An IR receiver. HDMI 2.1 and a built-in power supply. However, the most notable specification here, is that the device is powered by the 5-core Apple A15 Bionic chip. This is quite powerful for this kind of device, as it is the same chip that powered the iPhone 13 series including its Proline, and they were still even used in the regular iPhone 14 models. This allows the device to handle 4K 60fps content, supporting both Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus formats, along with Dolby Atmos. We can make out from the hardware specifications alone, that this is a very powerful device of its kind, even if we compare it to top-of-the-line Android TV boxes. The device has a heft to it, and we were immediately impressed with the build quality. This certainly feels like a premium product. As mentioned in the specs sheet, the back of the device comes with an HDMI 2.1 port, a gigabit network port, and as it has in-built power supply, you can directly plug a standard power cord to it. Here it is in comparison with Xiaomi TV Box S 2nd Gen, which is one of the most recent Android TV boxes that we have reviewed in the channel. The dimensions are almost the same, except for the Apple TV's thickness, which is about two times thicker than the Android TV box. Here it is beside the Google Chromecast 4K with Google TV, which has a totally different form factor as it is a dongle-type device. We appreciate everything about its build quality and design, except for the device's surface, which seems to be fingerprint and dust magnet. It's already full of smudges, considering that we just opened it a few minutes ago. Let's check out the other items included in the packaging. It includes the standard power cable, which will differ depending on your region. As mentioned earlier, the device itself contains a built-in power supply, which means you don't need to have a separate power adapter, unlike most of the other streaming devices out there. And lastly, we have the third generation Siri remote, which is one of the standout features of this device. It is unlike any streaming device remote we held in our hands, as it is encased in aluminium silver, with a dedicated Siri button on the right side. At the bottom, you'll find a USB-C port, which can be used for charging. This is one of the notable changes in the latest version, as it used to have a lightning port here. The top side contains the IR transmitter, which is another option of controlling your TV or receiver. Here's an overview of all the controls in the remote. It has a very similar setup to Android TV remotes, with the omission of dedicated buttons for streaming platforms such as Netflix or YouTube. One of the unique features of this remote though, which we have not seen in any Android TV remote, is the touch-enabled clickpad. This allows the UI to be navigated using swipe gestures, which has easily become both our most liked and most disliked feature of this device. We'll explain it to you once we move on to the software part of this review. Overall, we like the look and feel of this remote. The build is the same as holding an iPhone or an iPad in hand. Of course, the hardware is only half of the equation though. The device must provide good user experience, by utilizing both the hardware and software capabilities of the platform. Fortunately, Apple is known to be good in this regard, so we're excited to see their implementation, especially for us, being Android TV users for several years now. So let's connect this bad boy up, and see for ourselves. After setting up the device with our Apple ID, the first order of business is to always check for software updates, and sure enough, a new update was available for the device. At the time of this video, 
The latest version is tvOS 17.2 which was released at 11th of December, 2023. tvOS is Apple's implementation of an operating system for Apple TVs. You can think of it as Apple's version of Android tvOS, but only to be used for their own hardware. The apps is laid out in a grid-style layout in the home screen with the first six apps highlighted at the top. Moving through the apps gives you a link to the current content you're watching, along with some recommendations. The preview doesn't show in all apps though, but this is more of a shortcoming of the app developer themselves instead of Apple's. Same as in Android TV, you can press and hold the select button on the remote to rearrange the app icons, group them inside folders, or uninstall apps. With our experience interacting with the device for about a month now, we can easily say that it offers the most fluid and smoothest navigation, among all the streaming devices we've used so far. Even the swipe gestures was a revelation and it has easily become our favorite way of navigating through the user interface. Installing apps is also straightforward, same as in Android TV, you can open the App Store to install apps. There's a reason why you often hear about Apple's walled garden though, it's mainly because Apple is restricting installation of other apps outside the App Store. This is unlike most Android TV devices, which let you install apps outside the Play Store, by just allowing unknown sources from the settings. The good thing is Apple TV is supported by most of the major streaming providers, usually at the same level as how the Android TV platform is supported. So it's most likely that the app you want to use is also in this platform. We've even saw some IPTV apps there, which were not accessible in the App Store before. The difference in the UI is only present mostly in the home screen. As soon as you open an app, we found that the experience is similar in between the two platforms. You won't be able to tell straight away if you just look at the screen, whether the device the app is running from is Android TV or from the Apple TV. This is good for users, especially for those who's planning to switch between platforms, as the UI is essentially the same. In live use though, you can definitely make out that navigating across content is smoother. Picture quality seems to be better and loading times are definitely shorter mainly because of the powerful hardware on this device. Remember when we mentioned that the remote swipe gesture is our most liked feature about this device? Well ironically, it is also our most disliked feature specifically when viewing YouTube videos in the device. We found that the touch-enabled clickpad doesn't work really well, when scrubbing through YouTube videos while playing. To be fair, this seems to be Google's shortcoming as they seem to have implemented their own playback controls in the YouTube app, instead of using the standard ones in tvOS. We've decided to temporarily disable the remote touch controls from the settings, until Google updates the YouTube app on Apple TV. Speaking of settings, the number of options available on this device's settings screen is unmatched. You can even set it to show aerial screensavers, which features motion screensavers as opposed to static images. Manually switch between light and dark themes, or set it to change automatically based on your location. Set parental controls and change Siri settings. But what's most intriguing for us is the presence of calibration settings, as we haven't seen this in any Android TV device that we've used so far. Note though that the color balance and wireless audio sync functionalities require an iPhone to be used as a calibration tool. The other two options allow you to change the zoom or overscan settings, and also display a TV color bar test pattern, which is very handy. This review also wouldn't be complete, without mentioning the native Apple apps that are unique to Apple TV. This may sound redundant, but the separate TV app is the centerpiece app on this device. Apple even lets you set the Siri remote's home button to open this app, instead of going to the home screen. This is Apple's way of directing users to use their own streaming service, the Apple TV+. They even let you connect other streaming services to the app, to allow content to be aggregated and have it act as a common interface for all your streaming apps. This is fine for us, but the thing that is holding us back from using this functionality, is the lack of support for Netflix, which is the biggest streaming service in the world. Adding Netflix support will definitely help Apple to compete in streaming aggregation space. Until then, we only see this functionality being widely adopted in the US. Another app that is unique to this device is the Photos app, which let you view the photos and videos from your iCloud account. This is particularly useful for iOS or iPhone users, as it allows them to view the photos and videos directly from their iCloud account without screencasting. We now wonder why Google Photos is not available in Android TV, as it should have been the direct counterpart of this functionality there. 
Next up is the Apple Music app, which is as you guessed, let you stream music in the Apple TV with your Apple Music subscription. One of the notable features of this app is the ability to stream lossless music. Once enabled in the settings, users would be able to hear lossless quality as close to the original audio, if available. In the recent update, Apple also added the ability to use the iPhone's camera to allow users to see themselves on screen and apply filters, while they sing along to the lyrics. This is another unique feature in the Apple TV. The Apple Fitness app is also exclusive to Apple TV. In simple terms, it is both a workout tracking and a video streaming app in one. As usual, you need an active Apple Fitness Plus subscription to use this app. What's cool about it is it can display on-screen metrics in real time. It even pairs to an Apple Watch, so that it can display the heart rate during workouts. It also has picture-in-picture -picture support, so that it can be shown as a small viewer in the corner of the screen, and let you do your workouts while watching content from other streaming apps at the same time, which is pretty neat. And the last built-in app that we want to talk about is the Apple Arcade app. This is Apple's own game subscription service which at the time of this video, allows access to more than 200 games of various types. Apple even has added native support for PlayStation DualSense controller in tvOS, so that it can be used as a controller for the games instead of the remote. Individual controller profile can even be set up for each game in the settings. Based on our experience, games really play well on this device, which is expected because this device has very capable hardware. Though it's not the same quality as the current generation consoles, it is still impressive that a streaming device is capable of running such games at this quality. Those who intend to run emulators on this thing is out of luck though, as we cannot seem to find a single one available in the App Store. We might need to stick to our Android TV devices for that one. And since this device has native support for DualSense controller, we've checked if we can stream games from our PlayStation 5 in the living room through Remote Play. The official PlayStation Remote Play is not present in the App Store, but we found a third-party app called Mirror Play, that offers the same functionality. The app seems to work very well. The gameplay is smooth and the controls are really responsive. The PlayStation 5 and the Apple TV 4K are connected to the routers wirelessly, but it really helps that both support Wi-Fi 6 resulting in a much more stable connection. And now that we've checked some of the native apps on the device, there are still a few features that needs to be mentioned. Like spatial audio support, when a compatible Apple wireless earphones such as AirPods Pro or AirPods Max is connected to the device. It can transform Dolby Atmos or Dolby 5.1 soundtracks into a highly immersive experience, by simulating sound movement across the room or space. In tvOS 17, Apple also added the capability to initiate FaceTime calls from Apple TV 4K and use an iPhone or iPad as a camera, to allow video calls on TV. This capability is also supported in the WebEx and Zoom app. And lastly, when added to HomeKit which is Apple's home automation system, the Apple TV can serve as the hub that acts as the central device to control other smart devices that support the platform. We've covered plenty in this review, but believe it or not, there's still a lot of small features worth mentioning such as the functionality to find the remote when lost, are just the little animations that show up in the screen when a supported device can be connected. This really showcases Apple's attention to detail, and the usual fit and polish that they imbue in their products. But the question now is, is it worth the $129 that they're asking for this device? But before we give you our thoughts, we would like to request for you to hit the like button, especially if you find this video useful. You can also subscribe to our channel, so that you can be notified whenever we post new videos. On final note, we were genuinely impressed with the Apple TV 4K, and we believe that this device actually brings innovations to the media streaming device space. After reviewing its features, we realized that this is not just a simple streaming device, but based on its rich feature set, Apple intends for it to be the central media device for your home. That is of course if you're willing to bite in, to Apple's ecosystem. So for those who are already using Apple products and are already into Apple ecosystem, this should be your top choice when looking for a media streaming device. This recommendation also extends to those who are not dependent on Android as a platform, with no budget constraints and is just looking for a capable streaming device. This is for sure one of the best streaming devices you can get for your money. And lastly, for existing Android TV users, there's no real need to switch right now and you can hold on to the platform still.
The beauty about Android TV is that there's a good number of choices available to you as a consumer. We have previously reviewed a couple of devices with a good balance of price and performance on this channel, so please be sure to check them out if you're looking for one. You can even go up to the higher tier in NVIDIA Shield TV Pro territory, if you want to see what's top in this platform. Please let us know in the comments if you're also interested to know our thoughts about that device, or if you want to give us a feedback about this review. Until then, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.